Hello everyone, Vulcan here, and welcome to my review of episodes 75 and 76 of Dragon Ball Super. Though this is the second time in three occasions where I'm reviewing two episodes at once, I wouldn't expect this to become a regular thing. As you may know, some personal issues have come up which now means I have to move to a new place, so these past few weeks since I got back from Italy have been really hectic. Once I get a new place though, things should be getting even better than before as a matter of fact. So on to the review. These two episodes were focused on Krillin's development, as expected. Early on in episode 75, we find that Goku has been wanting a sparring partner as training while plying the fields have been getting pretty boring for him, as you can expect. Having had to fire Key Blast to do the job after his trusty old tractor definitively broke down. Goten and Chi Chi therefore suggested to Gohan that he should act as Goku's sparring partner. Gohan's initial reaction had me a bit worried because he suggested literally every other person who could train with Goku besides him himself. Even Goten, like, what? But we quickly find all options are impossible. Beerus and Whis are apparently doing work of their own, likely having to do with the Universe Survival Tournament. Vegeta just glared at Goku, which might have to do with Bulma, and if any of you have got up to date with the future titles, you know what I mean. While Piccolo and Dende are also doing... something. It's only when Gohan remembers that he can turn into the Great Saiyan Man that he decides he's okay with it. I mean, sure, I'm happy that Gohan is headed toward wanting to fight more for the sake of others after his two-parter, but is that really necessary? In any case, Goku and Gohan spar with each other for a bit, and we can see that at least now, Gohan is really proving himself to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Goku without losing in an instant. Considering he's made Goku go Super Saiyan and still didn't act as if Gohan was too easy for him is pretty telling and that makes me really happy. However, the sparring session didn't last long considering they quickly made short work of the fields after blasting all of them to smithereens. So struggling to find anyone else to train with who wouldn't end up destroying the surrounding areas, Goten suggests Krillin. Goku of course was ecstatic about this and immediately dashes off without even hearing what Chi Chi had to say. Krillin has of course been working as a beat cop and we find him right in the middle of a car chase. I was surprised at how a bullet grazes his arm and injures him. Even for Krillin, that's pretty weak considering even in the earliest days of Dragon Ball, he should have been tough enough that bullets wouldn't put a dent on him. I could understand if Krillin became weaker because of not training anymore, but to go as far as being hurt by a stray bullet, that seems a bit much. The good thing is that the bullet injury didn't go unnoticed as later in the episode, 18 tells him it's surprising that Krillin would get hurt by that kind of thing. If it went unnoticed, that would just mess up with the continuity as we'd have no reason as to why bullets have that kind of power. I mean, if you remember back in previous episodes as well, smoke grenades were able to affect Black and Zamasu, which is really weird. Instead, we see that the bullet is an appropriate plot device that serves as part of why Krillin eventually decides to start training again. However, what bothered me about this scene is that 18 looked very put off by this, even going as far as saying that she didn't fall in love and marry such a weakling who'd get hurt by such a small thing. Even Marin seems to be losing admiration for him. I mean, really? I kind of thought that they were in a pretty healthy relationship where power wasn't what mattered. After all, nothing Krillin could ever do would put him on the same level as 18, and I always thought the reason she married him was because of how he doomed the entire world if he could be with her. You know because he refused to press that button that would destroy her and prevent Cell from reaching his perfect form. Now I get that the writers tried to make it look more like 18 is concerned about Krillin getting weak and is therefore more worried for him than being concerned about any superficial sentiment that he's not the man she fell in love with simply because he's regressed. But it just came out the wrong way, especially with that whole broken heart cappuccino thing. At the end of the day though, this does encourage Krillin to train again, although he doesn't feel that he'd make a good sparring partner for Goku, which is true since even at his prime, there's no way Krillin would ever be a match for someone with the power of the gods. Instead, they decide to go to the Turtle Hermit and train like they did in the old days. Roshi also doesn't feel that any old-fashioned training he could have them do would have any effect on them, or at least Goku. So they decide to have a sparring match, with Goku being made to wear that turtle suit, which is supposedly much heavier than the turtle shell they'd worn in the old days. On top of that, Goku wasn't allowed to go Super Saiyan. Of course, that doesn't help Krillin at all, as the suit doesn't appear to hamper Goku in any way. So with Goku easily beating Krillin, Krillin feels very doubtful about his role as a martial artist and his place alongside Goku. There is far too big a gap between them after all. Roshi points out Krillin's doubt has a lot to do with his will which, while wanting to move forward, doesn't know how to resume moving after having stopped for so long. This is the reason why Krillin has grown weaker. Without the strength of will, doubt can be seen in all of his movements. 
Krillin wants to become strong again as he wants to be seen as strong by 18 and Marin, but simply doesn't feel confident in his ability to bridge, bridge the gap that exists between him and giants like Goku and Vegeta. Of course, there's nothing he can do, but what he can do is become the strongest version of himself, which he eventually does later in episode 76. So the next day, Roshi gives him the task of retrieving a special herb, and whoever gets it first will learn a special technique which boosts their strength instantly. It's pretty obvious that he's bluffing, as at this point, there can't be anything the old man can teach Goku who already has a number of ways of boosting his power instantly. Not to mention that if the hermit had such a technique, he'd have taught it to his students long ago. But Goku and Krillin buy it and decide to carry out the task anyways. Goku and Krillin hurry up to the island where they are told they would find the special herb. There, they are met by the fortune teller Baba, who tells them which direction to take. Once they enter the large cave, apparitions of their former enemies, including Vegeta as he appeared in the Saiyan saga, show up. Goku doesn't seem to be phased by this at all, but Krillin is quite scared of them, particularly Tambourine, who was the first person ever to kill Krillin. Seeing something very reminiscent of the Dagobah cave in Dragon Ball is actually very nice. I expected that much like how the apparition of Vader before Luke in the cave represented the darkness and fear inside of him, the appearances of Goku's and Krillin's former enemies was also meant to represent their past. Although, I have no idea why Bulma would be one of those enemies in the following episode. Speaking of episode 76, we get confirmation that that is in fact the case, as the apparitions appear out of the memories of those who enter the forest, which we find is named the Forest of Terror. Goku soon figures out that the apparitions move and become stronger the more energy of his own he uses. It's only when he diminishes his key to nothing and clears his mind that the apparitions disappear. Krillin takes a little while longer, being faced by numerous apparitions of Frieza, Tambourine, Cell, Boo, Dabora, and even Nappa, as he grew more and more afraid of everything he was seeing. He soon realizes after cutting an apparition of Nappa with his Kienzan that it was through his energy that they became stronger. Clearing his mind of fear and doubt, he made the apparition stop moving and even took it a step further than Goku. Instead of diminishing his key to nothingness, he established complete control of his energy and his emotions. This of course allowed the apparitions to remain intact, but because he established control over his energy, the apparitions could no longer move, allowing Krillin to dispatch them. By doing this, Krillin rose above himself, as Roshi put it, conquering his fears and becoming stronger by eliminating the doubt within himself. This was great to see, as these two episodes gave us a really good picture of why Krillin stopped training. Throughout episode 76, we received flashbacks of all the times he was killed or at least incapacitated by his enemies, who to him were insurmountable. Once more, we see one of the things that makes Super potentially better than Dragon Ball Z, which is characterization. Krillin has every right to be traumatized by all that's happened to him in the past, and this was further emphasized by, by his outburst to Goku, saying that there's no way he can find the situation fun the way Goku does. This makes even more sense when you consider the fundamental differences between human and Saiyan mentalities. Goku is, after all, a pure-blooded Saiyan, and any opportunity to test his strength, even at the risk of his life, is a good one, and he's less likely to be affected by past losses beyond wanting to overcome his weakness and become stronger. On the other hand, Krillin is human, and thus more likely to be discouraged by such experiences that have eventually caused him to shut down and run away from the good fight. But by overcoming his past and the fears he developed because of it, he became stronger than he ever was, even saving Goku from an apparition of Super Shenron. That to me made his development very interesting and entertaining. I also really liked the way 18 was redeemed in this episode by showing up at Kame House, showing concern for her husband. Seeing him struggling and learning what it was that he was facing, she couldn't help but feel concern for Krillin and even disapproved of the method by which Roshi and Baba were going about Krillin's recovery. But it was especially great to see both her and Marin rooting for him when in the previous episode they came off as really superficial, despite not being the writer's intent of course. So by defeating this final apparition of Super Shenron and overcoming their trials, the energy left behind caused the paradise plant herbs to grow, which Goku and Krillin bring back to Roshi. As expected, Roshi in fact didn't know any technique to instantly boost one's power and that if there was such a thing, he'd have been the first to want to know about it. Hey, when can he learn Kaioken? However, Krillin had a nice way of interpreting it. Overcoming their doubts and fears was exactly the sort of thing they needed to become stronger, as a fist filled with doubt will never be as strong as one that is filled with the will to push forward. Thanks to this, Krillin has now also decided to get back to fighting and start training again. To show his determination, he has 18 shave his head once more. 
All in all, this is a nice two-part episode where Quilling got some pretty good development. The preview of the next episode is of course going to have everything to do with Bulma and how she's about to give birth to Bra. Goku wants to go and train with Whis alongside Vegeta, who doesn't want to because of what his wife is going through, of course. We do also get brief screens of Tien and Seventeen, which means that they're going to be making their appearances, and that's really exciting. The two Zenos also appear to be looking at what seems to be either a game or a map of the universe, so this next episode is going to have a lot happening in it by the looks of things. I would hope that we'll also get some episodes about Tien at the very least, as he hasn't really had any significant appearances in this series, and God forbid he needs them. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, like it if you did, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, subscribe to my channel for more, and hopefully I will see you again soon.